Bienvenidos! We're back! You thought you'd never see me again. But here I am. Just a small layoff. And I've got two small jars of sauce here. The most loyal follower will receive one. Send me a message to ask for that. So today we're going to be looking at one of Google's Core Web Vitals. If you're not familiar with that, you can just Google it. Core Web. Check out their website which shows you what the other vitals are. One of the big boys. If you've ever been on a dodgy website and tried to click something and it's moved just as you've clicked and you've ended up on the wrong page, that's cumulative layout shift. A few years back it was rampant, especially on like news websites, Buzzfeed. I'm, I'm thinking all kinds of things like Buzzfeed basically. As a web developer, yourself and myself, we don't want to have any cumulative layout shift on our website. And now, luckily, Google's forcing people to get rid of it. Drilling into my little project here that I've created using Webpack just to show you an example. NPM start. And we're actually using the website I built on the other video, so check that out if you haven't seen it. And you can scroll around. We've got a couple of buttons there that just scroll us down. And the thing we've added to this website is a carousel. Slick carousel, which is one I use at work, and I think it's quite a. I think it's one of the bigger carousels out there. It's well, well used, and it does a good job, but it can be a bit fiddly. If you pop open the console and throttle us down to slow 3G, and then hit refresh on the page, we're going to see why slick carousel causes cumulative layout shift. And there you go, it's loaded, the whole page is loaded, but because the JS hasn't kicked in yet, the carousel isn't there, and the images are just stacked. Let's speed up that, that throttle a bit. Fast 3G. I swear my fast 3G on my phone is a lot better than Chrome's simulated fast 3G, but they know more than me. Okay, there. So we finally got it, and you can see it took about, what was that, 20 seconds? for the page to actually come to its final position. And that's that's what we're talking about, that's the enemy. If you're using any sort of JavaScript carousel, this is gonna be a problem that you're gonna have to deal with. And if we take off the throttle and refresh, you can see it still happens even at full speed. It's just the nature of the beast. So what can we do about that? Let's get a bit saucy around here. I've got, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to edit that out. So if I come over to my projects, jump into my JS file, disable my carousel, I can see now what you will see if you're loading this page on a slow mobile or with a slow internet connection. What I'm gonna do is try to basically get the pictures to be in the position that they would be once Slick's kicked in, but before Slick's kicked in. So that would mean that the page will load with everything in position, slick will start and it will become interactive but it won't actually move, which will prevent content below it from being shifted, hence the stopping of the cumulative layout shift. It's pretty cringy when people ask for likes without doing anything to earn it. Like the video. Let's head over to our CSS. And what is this called? I've forgotten what this is even called because I've done it a while ago. Slideshow. Tell you what else we'll do. We'll move this to the top. Just so it's easier for us to work on. And it's easier for you guys to see that it's working. Slideshow ends there. And refresh the page. Yep. So it's the same thing just at the top just to prove it's still working. There you go. So, find the slide sure. Hmm. Okay, I haven't styled it at all yet. Good starting point. Got slide sure. We'll make this one. We'll make this one display flex. 
and instantly we're doing better. We're in line, we're almost there. And we will, we'll add in some slide classes. And we're using BEM. So slide show, slide. Save, slide show, and then using our BEM naming convention. We just do that. So we're in SAS, slide, width. 100% flex string 0 I'll stop it from uh, shrinking down to try and let the next one in and we will put overflow hidden on the parent container so now, we're actually looking exactly how the slideshow looks once it's interactive, but with no, no actual interactivity. So let's see what happens when we add our slideshow back in. Refresh. Would you look at that? Now when I refresh the page, can't see any change no shift and I'm going to throttle down to slow 3G hit refresh and there you have it still loading incredibly slow time for me to show off the source again why not um, ah here we go so it's loaded the page it's not even interactive yet, but you can't even tell because the content is almost identical to how it is when it's loaded. Let's unthrottle. And I didn't see any change there, and it's sliding. So to to finish this little to finish this little baby off, let's grab the slideshow that's that's done and put it back down here. Refresh. There we go. Simple, very simple step you can take as a developer to improve your user's experience on the site, but a lot of people don't do it, and there's no reason, as you can see. It took me no time. You can use Lighthouse to test it, to verify it. Lighthouse will give you a score. Web page speed test uh, runs Lighthouse remotely as well if you want to verify that independent of yourself. And yeah, happy developing.